this video is about having clean energy now. It has nothing to do with hydrogen fuel cells, lithium, heavy metals, or other dangerous or toxic substances. It's also not about solar or wind. Those technologies are renewables only. They're dependent on uh, specific environmental conditions. The power cell plates under uh, this motor and this motor as well are a clean energy source. They do not need to be charged. They won't burn, freeze, explode, or crack open. Although these are partially electrochemical, they have an extremely long lifespan and they're non-toxic, which are both not similar to common batteries. They're also not like the old limited copper zinc, the, you know, the salt-based hobby batteries. Everybody's seen those for years and years, I'm sure. These provide a great amount of surface area and they're made of heavy plates that will absolutely last for decades. So there's a big difference there, and especially with the graphite plates too. I know there's a lot of, uh, well, quote unquote, battery people out there attempting to develop new storage technologies. And really, that's great. I mean, we, we need those storage technologies, but unfortunately, that's their only use, is storage. Uh, they're not an energy source, but these are. I've fabricated a lot of different cell plate configurations for our machines and kits and a standalone energy source devices for people that just wanted to run something continuously. These two here are long-term experiments that I've constructed in the past to prove that it's completely possible to do. So what you're looking at is both energy source and load on both uh, within each device. It's, uh, in order to operate continuously, there's one major rule of thumb that people just are unfortunately ignoring and that is that the device must not demand the motor or lights or whatever you're running and you want to run continuously, it must not demand greater than one-third of the, the cell or cell modules typical regenerated output. The top one-third, that's what you want to deal with. You can't extract 90% of, of what the cell's showing on a meter. If you do, it's just going to decline and decline and decline. If you stay within that top one-third or, or even smaller, like one-quarter, but one-third is the safe zone. If you stay within that, it will run continuously. Um, it, it's best, really, when the uh, cells pr produce just, you know, slightly more output than that one-third factor that's required, but uh, it, that way it causes you the need to reduce the input to the device and then it's like this guaranteed insurance that the thing is just going to run and run and run. Uh, this little dual coil motor here is now into its fourth year of continuous 24-7 operation without any servicing or adjustment or slowing down. I, have, I set this uh, potentiometer, it's a 100k ohm potentiometer, I set it once and I haven't touched it since and this has never slowed down, it's just the same, and like I said, it's into its fourth year of uh, continuous operation 24-7. The six inch, the single six inch square cell plate running this motor is part of, of version one of the initial experimental cells. I had to use the, the variable resistor to reduce the current. It was just, you know, it could have ran on maybe a quarter of that size or half that size as far as the plates, but um, I just wanted to, to, to make sure that I had enough, but I had to put the uh, variable resistor on there so that it, it wouldn't uh, overpower the dual coil motor and, and destroy itself mechanically because it bangs up against the little plastic housing or overloading the little capacitors that are on the circuit boards uh, or cooking maybe like transistors. Each one's got a couple of transistors on the board. So the larger experiment here uses, actually uses two 12-inch square cell plates that are connected in series. And that's kind of as an overkill amount of energy source. I really could have done it with a single plate. It probably would work fine. But I wanted to make sure that it would keep running for at least two or three decades or longer. I, I just don't know at this point. Or until the, the coil units wear out or maybe even the there's a ball bearing on this little shaft it's no little pinwheel thing it's you know you can you can lift this you can move it around I'm just I'm just showing you there's nothing nothing under it either I put a, 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 a 10k ohm variable resistor on this one here and because of the the dual plates 
I need to cut down the power even though there's eight circuit boards to power and eight coils to power and then the friction of the shaft so that's a nice little load here so you've got a source and a load combined into one so uh, and this one's running uh, I think the last time I measured is about a hundred and hundred or hundred and ten rpm something like that and it seems to be a nice sweet spot for the variable resistor so I just leave it at that but here's the question if one square foot cell can run this motor continuously for many years what do you think a hundred times that might be able to do let's have a look mm -hmm. 